I'll be talking a lot about uh, projects and building them and uh, to do that you can use uh, pickaxe microcontrollers but and that's very easy it's a lot of software and a little bit of hardware uh, but you need a, a serial programming cable which you can buy but the one you usually can buy is not that safe so um, and it's very cheap to make so I'm explaining here how you can make that serial cable and then if you do that and you get the pickaxe chips you can actually uh, repeat everything that I'll be showing uh, or uh, writing up on my website later um, this serial cable is, uh, is, is used to connect the computer to the pickaxe chip it basically communicates through a, a 9.6 uh, of 9600 uh, baud uh, uh, serial connection to refresh uh, the programming uh, but of course serial is 12 volt and these chips are 5 volt maximum so you have to build a, a, a way to connect the serial high voltage uh, information uh, input to the to the chip here you can see that uh, there's a, a white wire uh, on the left uh, a black wire uh, a little bit above that and, and to the right of it and a red wire those are the serial connection wires that I'm using here and you can see uh, right in the middle of it uh, a brown uh, diode a Zener diode which is used to protect but uh, protect the, the chip against over voltage uh, here's your bill of materials and then I'll just walk through uh, what you need to do to make the cable you need a couple of resistors and a diode and of course you need a, a 9 pin mill serial connector the one that you saw above uh, and that's there's I believe there's two kinds a 9 and a 12 pin uh, kind but uh, they're pretty uh, ubiquitous you can take an old uh, monitor cable I believe you can also uh, kind of uh, uh, use that uh, here's the circuit uh, to the right is the chip uh, there the chip always has uh, uh, let's say a serial out and input and a, and a, and a ground uh, uh, connection that you need to make uh, of course these are uh, two lines serial out and in that carry voltages they cannot be absolute they have to be relative to a ground voltage that's a zero and here you can see the the parts this is the so-called advanced circuit that uh, that is uh, adver adver advertised. Uh, actually, there's still uh, oh no, there, this is complete. It's not really advanced. It's just secure. If you don't use it like this, uh, you will burn through your chips, and it takes a long time to get new ones. So it's really ridiculous that uh, that you let's say get presented this only when you are reading more into this uh, topic. Usually, they take out this resistor which uh, limits the current from the output serial output and they you and they take out this uh, zener diode which protects uh, against uh, uh, let's say voltage spikes from the computer which can kill your chip instantly so uh, they're quite important uh, parts in the pictures that you'll see the black and the red and the white wires will be the same as in this uh, in this picture so you can reference it uh, on this side you usually use uh, kind of improvised uh, pins and of course the, the location of these connections to the pickaxe chips does vary so you have to simply look it up in the manual uh, and see uh, what your uh, chip needs once you do this circuit you have a connection that is uh, secure it doesn't ruin your chips and uh, it's pretty reliable so that's my experience more reliable actually than when you buy the standard uh, chip uh, the cable from uh, from the supplier of pickaxe chips because they don't include the diodes and all that stuff so this is the nine uh, pin serial connector uh, this is the back of it it's a blurry picture take another one so this is how you connect uh, this is white is ground red is serial in uh, and black is serial out so this is towards the computer and this is from the computer this is how you connect them so you take the top row the second the third and the fifth and you solder these wires too it's pretty straightforward. forward when you come to the to let's say this part of the circuit I'm showing you my own first improvised cable because I bought a, a standard so this is the 230 uh, or 220 uh, ohm uh, resistor it doesn't really matter how big it is uh, this is a 100k uh, uh, resistor uh, which is simply to, uh, to, to 
regulate the relative voltages. Got some. Uh, oh no, you don't. Well, you probably won't see that. But anyway, this is the ground cable. Or sorry, this is the output cable that has nothing uh, that uh, basically uh, impinges it. You can use that 180 uh, ohm resistor in this. And I'm not using it at the moment, but uh, I can imagine you you could. I didn't purchase the resistor yet, but. Uh, this is basically one of the most important parts you'll see if it if I can so this is the Zener diode what it does it is it it, it it works only until a certain voltage and then it and then it fills but it fills without breaking so this Zener diode fills once you get a voltage over 5.1 uh, volt then it starts uh, let's say uh, taking away that uh, the, the, the electrons uh, on the high side and that means that your voltage can never, never go over 5.1 uh, volt on this side of the Zener diode, so on the high side. This is like usually current flows from this direction through a diode. Uh, uh, so it is, ma it is in the circuit in a way that it basically it blocks any current, but when the voltage on this side gets over 5.1 uh, volt, uh, it does, and then of course you, you limit the voltage that way. It's not uh, something that you can do permanently, because of course if there's uh, current flowing through this thing it will heat up and, and, and of course you're losing a lot of power. But for the incidental spike this is, uh, this is enough. Uh, if it burns through that's actually fine, because then you know that something is wrong and you have to do something about uh, your whole uh, circuit and your whole uh, setup. In the in the in the circuit, this is a little bit clumsy way of showing it, but it has to. This is the relative uh, connection. So you have the input pin, uh, and the diode is over that uh, to the to the ground uh, uh, wire to the ground wire. Uh, so that uh, if if voltage on this side is too high, it will flow to that side. And of course, this is. So now you've seen uh, how you can make a serial cable. And, uh, and with that you can program these little uh, chips, this is one of the smallest, the 808M2 which is actually a pretty versatile uh, chip uh, for this size, it can, uh, it can do analog, analog to digital conversion, uh, 10 bits it can do uh, uh, I2C connection with all kind of periphery, so you can put a memory bank connected to it, you can all do an amazing uh, number of things with it uh, and I'm gonna demonstrate that uh, later in other videos and so to make sure that you can uh, can tag along and do this as well at a low cost hopefully uh, I'll sh I've shown you this uh, how to make this serial cable